to the Michael Mamas Show. I am your host, Michael Mamas, and we're coming to you from Mount Soma, home of the Sri Sameshwara Temple in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Uh, today's podcast, Hidden in Plain View, the Rishi's Ancient Secret Key. Um, I think I, I'd like to start out, actually, as I often do, is talking about, you know, just this, uh, you know, something different from the main theme of the podcast. And even though it kind of relates, I'd like to talk about the James Webb Telescope. Those of you that have been listening to the podcast know that for a long time I've been seeing that uh, the Hubble Telescope has seen galaxies out there, particularly one galaxy that I'm aware of, that is older than the Big Bang Theory predicted the age of the universe to be. So just from that, you know, Big Bang Theory's got a problem. But people, it's interesting, you know, and it speaks so much of what we talk about, identity with perspective, even among astronomers, astrophysicists, you know, uh, because what do they do with that information? They ignored it. Uh, but now with the James Webb Telescope, they look deeper into space and they see many galaxies that are older than the Big Bang Theory predicted the universe to be. Obviously, the Big Bang Theory has got a big problem. And actually, in the uh, text that I post, my notes, that I text is a blog that goes along with the podcast. There's a link if you want to click on it. And it uh, goes to something that's actually being published in the, I forget the name of the foremost astrophysics astronomy uh, uh, publication for scientists. And uh, they talk about it. And actually, there are like something like 20 ast astronomers, astrophysicists, highly credentialed from all over the world that put their name to that article. And the first word is, is really all you need to know, panic. You know, because all these people that invested their lives in the Big Bang Theory, it's not holding up, you know. Um, but I, I published the link there just if you want to take a look, you know. But the, the, the thing is, too, there are other problems, um, as I've talked about in the past. There are other problems. Like one problem is that um, the whole thing with black holes and Big Bang Theory, one of the assumptions that they make, and really just common sense, Scotty, if you just think about it, just common sense. Uh, one of the assumptions they make is that subatomic particles, uh, electrons, have no dimensionality. They're just points in space with no size whatsoever. And just intuitively, that's obviously incorrect. And if this is, oh, geez, what's his name? I can't remember offhand. But anyway, he, he pointed that out. And if you give any kind of dimensionality to an electron, then the way the mathematics works out, there's no such thing as black holes, all these different big bang theories, you know? Uh, uh, are kaput, you know? Now, now another interesting thing is this whole idea of uh, matter and antimatter. Antimatter is basically uh, kind of like the inverse of matter. In other words, an electron is a negative charge. Uh, so the correlate to an electron in uh, antimatter has a positive charge. It's called a positron. In the nucleus, instead of being positive charge, it's negatively charged. It's all inverted. And... Uh, uh, before the Big Bang theorists came along, the idea was that there's an equal amount of, pos pos of uh, antimatter and matter. And it's well known that when antimatter and matter come together, uh, there's a major explosion, okay? In fact, uh, when lightning strikes, there's, it's incredibly powerful. And the electromagnetic energy from that is so powerful that it can uh, uh, act like a, a subtonic, Atomic uh, particle accelerator, and what it does then is it splits uh, some subatomic particles, and you end up with a thing of antimatter, which immediately interacts with matter. And even though they're extremely small, uh, that's what creates the big, huge flash and the, and the incredible uh, uh, effects that uh, thunder and lightning lightning can have. Uh, but 
out in space, the new idea now, which is actually an old idea, re, uh, 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 regained now that the Big Bang Theory is looking like it can't possibly be. And the idea is there are whole galaxies out there that are made of antimatter. And there are whole galaxies made of matter. And they're far, far, far apart. But if a, this is kind of cool, Scotty, if, if an antimatter galaxy comes into proximity to a regular matter galaxy and the outskirts of them, when they touch, you get that antimatter matter explosion. And as they continue to overlap and combine like that, that process continues on and on. So you get this huge constant because it takes a long time for galaxies to, you know, completely overlay one another. So you get this huge constant uh, source of energy and light. And that's what a quasar is. But now there's another thing. Um, and they didn't know what quasars were. They were thinking, well, maybe it's a black hole. And they didn't really have an explanation. But maybe when matter goes into the black hole, there's kind of this digestion thing going on. And so that's what a, a quasar is. And they didn't really get it, but they were just kind of guessing, you know. But the thing with the antimatter and matter galaxies, it just, the logic is right there. Now, also, um, there's something called a gamma ray burst. Uh, it's, it's, it's just on a smaller scale. It's like if you have a meteor of antimatter and it crashes into something of matter, then you get a quick burst and then it's disintegrated and gone and it's over. So you get this burst of light, gamma ray burst. Uh, and so that's, that's the newest understanding of that whole thing. Uh, but this is also profound and also radical and it's coming around. There's like a Copenhagen uh, interpretation of Schrodinger equation. What Schrodinger said is just to say it simply, uh, well, he used the Schrodinger cat and he said the cat, if it could be compared to a subatomic particle, the cat is alive and dead at the same time. And, uh, that's, that's kind of a ridiculous interpretation. It's either alive or it's dead. So there's another interpretation called a statistical ensemble. And that is that if you have a subatomic particle and it goes through a process, you know, it's either going to be alive, exist, or not exist. But it's not going to exist and not exist at the same time. So what's happening in the field of physics then is a lot of these far out theories, and this is really upsetting to people that devoted their life to the Big Bang, Harvard University physics department, astronomy department, they're all vested in Big Bang Theory and it's just not holding up. Uh, uh, but now to get kind of the, to the subject of uh, the podcast a little more, that doesn't just exist in within the arena of astrophysics and astronomy. Most pure physicists have always questioned the Big Bang. Uh, so it's the astronomers, maybe the astrophysicists, you're kind of on the fence, particularly the astronomers. But the, the point being now, though, that um, that's just one example. The, the field of politics, um, there's different perspectives. And even if one perspective clearly stops working, um, uh, for example, the, oh, I don't know, take your COVID, what they were saying about COVID in the beginning, you know, even some of the people... That, what's that woman's name? I, I can't remember. I'm sure, Scott, you can't remember either. But she appeared with Fauci a lot. She was a nice looking older woman with a, she always wore a scarf. Uh, she was a physician. She actually wrote a book saying that, you know, all the stuff we were saying about COVID isn't right. Which, by the way, Scotty, is what you and I have been saying in this podcast from the very beginning. Uh, uh, it's just common sense, you know, and a lot of people know it. But still, in light of all of that, there are still people that are clinging on to uh, uh, the perspective of, uh, on COVID, even though, you know, it's out there. Experts in the field, leading authorities are saying, no, that's not the way it is, you know. And this is my experience of, at, in, when I was in private practice, you know. When the patent runs out on a drug, all of a sudden that drug goes from being, you know, God's be all and end all gift to mankind to malpractice if you even use it. And um, um, hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, they did it. 
Ivermectin is a horse medicine. No, it's not. It was developed by a scientist in Japan, I believe, I think perhaps in conjunction with an American, I'm not sure. And uh, it got the highest rating for saving human lives. That's why it was developed. But you see, everything gets spun based and based on an identity. Even in the field of uh, astrophysics, you see. And you, you see it everywhere. And what's happening now, though, like for another example is the whole uh, inflation thing. And uh, uh, it's amazing that even Yellen, Janet Yellen, you know, she was saying, oh, well, you know, printing more money, printing trillions of dollars won't won't uh, cause inflation. I mean, that's ridiculous. Even by definition, it's ridiculous. Uh and finally, to her credit, she's come back and said, oh, we, we were mistaken, you know. But the thing is, generally people, they cling on to a perspective, what their first impression is, what their first response is, the group they align with, that's it. That's their truth, and they will not let it go, even in the face of overwhelming evidence, okay? But now, the good news is that I think anybody who watches the news and I'm not just saying one channel, one station, one thing, but who just takes a look at what's going on out there. And the information is out there if you're willing to look. Uh, or anybody who even looks at other people and how they're getting along. I mean, it becomes obvious that the world has gone completely nuts. And, uh, uh, you know, 90% of Americans, they did a poll, 90% of Americans say that the United States is moving in the wrong direction. You know, uh, and so that's a good sign. You know, people are finally waking up. And there, then there's this notion of infinite correlation. You know, you got the craziness and the upheaval going on in, in the arena of physics, astrophysics. You've got the upheaval and the transformation coming on where 90% of Americans think uh, the country's going the wrong direction. This information about COVID, which, I mean, I've been saying it from the very beginning. I have a medical background. I mean, the, what they were saying was just so transparently obvious to me because I have a background in the field, you know. But now people are becoming aware of it. It's become, And that's in the face of the pharmaceutical companies, the pharmaceutical industrial complex that have made billions, literally billions off of, off of COVID and the, and the vaccine. And it was completely... corrupt, you know, or gravely mistaken. But there are people, they knew, they knew. But maybe not all of them. See, there, there are those that are just oblivious. They're mistaken. They are, are convinced by what's being pushed upon them by the corrupt. Uh, um, and then there are the truly corrupt who knew, but just... One, they went for the money, and that's epidemic in the pharmaceutical company uh, across the board. The other thing I've noticed, I'll tell you what, if you see anything advertised in a television commercial, like they have these, um, oh, different supplements, uh, sleep medications, um, what's that thing, uh, vegetable and fruit juice in a capsule, things like that. There's so much money being poured into marketing that really, if, if you buy into that, you're, you're buying into marketing more than the product. Who knows if that product is any good? And, they're, and as long as they're making huge amounts of money, they will push it and they will get people up there that say anything. Even the claims about that vegetable fruit thing. I mean, even if it has some benefit, the claims they're making about it are absurd. You know, nothing's going to do that. It's like they're making out like a, panacea and it's just preposterous you know so i think all this is changing people are waking up the phase transition is happening but when you look out there and you see all the craziness in the world everywhere you look it's just nuts and i've talked about phase transition and we're in a phase transition but still people try to meet everything on its own level you know the democrats are trying to combat the Republicans and pro-COVID vaccine, anti-COVID vaccine, 
pro-border control versus open border. Nevertheless, they're, they're all fighting on the same level. And it's, I compare it to like a fishbowl. If you have a fishbowl and it's dirty, all the fish in it are doing poorly. Some of them are dead. Some of them are floundering. Some of them maybe are like going insane and trying to jump out of the water or whatever. All you have to do is cling the fishbowl. And that corresponds exactly to what we're talking about when we're talking about global consciousness, world consciousness. The world is going nutty. And it's, it's, it's been nutty for thousands of years, really, hasn't it? But it's really met with a crescendo now because everywhere you turn, uh, you, uh, what sex? Should we teach sex to kindergartners? Uh, should we ask them if they're a boy or a girl? Uh, just everywhere you turn. Uh, it's just the world's gone mad. Why? Because the fishbowl of global consciousness, and it is a tangible thing. Uh, in Vedic tradition, you might say it relates to the Akash, the space. And it can get uh, uh, congested. It can get dirty, like a dirty fishbowl. And instead of meeting things on, on their own level and trying to say, oh, this fish isn't healthy, so let's you know, give them a little extra food. Or that fish isn't healthy, so you know, maybe we should... Uh, you swirl water around them or whatever. No, no, none of that's going to work. Clean the fishbowl and they all get better. And like that, we need to clear the Akash, clear the global consciousness, clear the, the uh, space. And it clears everything. All the fish get better. You see? And like that, humanity can get better. And these things cycle. They're karmic. karmic. The sun rises, the sun sets. That's what they call in the Vedic tradition, the yugas. The rishis gave us that knowledge. The yugas, the ages. And, and the rishis have said that right now we're coming to an age where sat yuga, the age of purity, harmony, uh, we're entering sat yuga, brief period of sat yuga, right in the midst of kali yuga, which is the age of oblivion. And all you got to do is channel surf and read the names of the different programs. And you realize, man, this is kali yuga, you know? And uh, what was that? Some guy tried to stab a congressman who was running for governor in New York, I think it was. They arrest him. Two hours later, they let him out on his own recognizance, no bail. Uh, so many examples like that. Uh, we're clearly in that age. All you have to do is take a step back and look. It's just like if you're walking into a room and there's a dirty fishbowl there, you don't have to think. Really, you just look, and that fishbowl is dirty. Clean the fishbowl, or all the all the fish are going to get sick. No brainer. That's there. It's hidden in plain view for people if they're just willing to take a step back and look. And uh, the ancient rishis gave us the knowledge of how to clean the fishbowl of consciousness, and it's there. It's readily available. And that's what we're doing. That's, that's why we have Mount Soma. That's what we're building here. It's a technology, you know, and technologies can be incredible. Whoever thought we could have a technology where we fly people to the moon? Whoever thought we could have a technology where I can pick up a phone and call Scotty, Scotty across the continent and we just gab, you know? Uh, it seems it's miraculous, but there is a technology to it. And there's a technology to cleaning the fishbowl of consciousness for the whole planet. It's there. It's readily available. There's one problem with it, though, and that is that positive attracts negative. In other words, this, this um, in, in the arena of consciousness, this is what we're talking about here, when, when a, a wave of purity comes in to clear those cobwebs, to clear that dirty fishbowl of consciousness, it fights back. It resists. And that's a well-known fact in the Vedic tradition, well-known fact in India. The opposition that you confront by building even one temple, a Shiva temple, can be formidable. Great kings with huge armies have tried to build a Shiva temple and failed. Uh, but in an enlightened city, there's a mathematical formula for it also, n squared times 100. So basically what it boils down to is by building an enlightened city, 
which is something that's so powerful, it'll cleanse the fishbowl of consciousness for an entire continent. You see, so six continents, six of these would purify the consciousness for the whole world, you see. And, and, but it starts with the United States for obvious reasons. And so that's why we're building one here. But the opposition is N squared times 100. It's like thousands of times more formidable than the opposition we incur uh, by building just one temple. And we're experiencing that. I'm telling you, it's been tough. Uh, uh, we, we built the Shiva temple, people even all the time. People in the know will come and say, it's a miracle. How did you do that? And now we're trying to do something so much, uh, so many thousands of times uh, uh, more challenging, really. They asked my teacher once uh, why he never built any temples. He said, there's just too much karma involved. That's what he was talking about. Um, so, you know, I make a joke sometimes. Before I really <clears throat> realized, to be honest, the profundity of the thing, uh, you know, let Mikey do it. But, you know, that's what we're doing. We're dedicated to it. We're going to make it happen. But I'm telling you that the obstacles, the uh, challenges, uh, the heartache really uh, has been formidable, you know. Um, what else, Scotty? Even, even the whole idea of spirituality. You see, here's what happens in the field of different religions. And this is an important point because it's true for Christianity. It's true for uh, Hinduism. It's true for all the religions. But in the, in, the, in the arena of Hinduism, let's face it. I mean, any Hindu has been around at all will be able to tell you a lot of superstition has crept into different parts of Hinduism. There are some groups that believe this. There are some groups that believe that. And what that does then is... A number of Indians, in fact, and uh, people throughout the world look at Hinduism or Christianity or any of their religions, and they, they look at that superstition that crept in, and they say, I can't buy it. What do they do? They throw out the baby with the bathwater. So the whole trick, the whole key, what's of utmost important here, importance here is that we purify the understanding. We, we are discerning. Hari Shankar, in fact, the greatest saint in the history of India, perhaps, said that uh, the, path, the spiritual path is a path of discernment. So we're discerning and we, and we look and we reflect and we ponder and we pursue and we think and we use everything we've got to purify the knowledge. And uh, uh, that's where the knowledge that we found, and it's incredible that we even came across it really, but uh, the pure knowledge of how to build and enlightened city that would transform the continent. You see, you know, some people have asked me in the past, uh, Angkor Wat, where's that? Scotty Thailand or somewhere? Anyway, Angkor yeah. Wat. Camp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone asked me once, well, isn't Angkor Wat an enlightened city? Well, maybe it was, but it's certainly not now because it's one thing to build it, it's another thing to operate it properly. And if you even look at the history of Angkor Wat, it was originally just designed uh, within per certain parameters. And then in time, even though the structure remained the same, the parameters changed. Uh, how, to, how to operate it changed. And even though each separately could be valid, you can't mix them. It's like, like I say, it's like taking a carburetor off of a Volkswagen and trying to stick it in a sports car. It just doesn't work. There's a mismatch there. And, and so... Uh, then I even heard, I actually saw this on a program about Angkor Wat, and they said that one of the kings decided, you see, in the, in the heart of a, a temple or even a, a Vedic home, uh, there's something called the Brahma Sun. It's the heart of the thing. And, and it needs to be protective, protected, needs to be managed very, very carefully and properly. And uh, uh, one of these kings decided that when he died, he wanted, he wanted to be buried in the Brahmastan. And I mean, talking about, oh my goodness, you know? So when you do that sort of thing, the, it all falls apart. You got a big mess. So there's one thing to build an enlightened city. It's another thing to manage it properly. And that, that's why even though construction is far, far, far from complete, um, 
Uh, we really were just in the beginning stages. I think we've put something like 30 some million dollars into it so far, all told. And uh, to, f to finish it at a minimum would probably be what, 100, 150 million. Uh, uh, and by the time you do everything else, hotels and everything you want, we're probably looking at a couple hundred million dollars to really get it done uh, complete. But, uh, you know, of course, the hotels aren't necessary to create the unified field generator, but you're going to need people there. People are going to want to come and visit and things like that. Uh, uh, so, so the point being, it, where, where was I, Scotty? The point being, it just takes a lot and we're working on it. And uh, that's why if you want to support us, you know, go to my, uh, mountsoma.org, make a donation of any amount. And really, if you see, here's the thing. People are identified with a perspective. They have friends that are identified with a worldview. And I can't tell you how many people have said, well, I love what you're teaching and this is all incredible. It's all great. But they won't tell anybody. They won't tell anybody. They won't tell their friends. They keep a secret. Why? Because they think their friends won't get it. They won't relate to it. They'll think they're weird or whatever. And uh, it's, it's a shame because the technology is there. Granted, people aren't familiar with it, but it's real. And uh, uh, we need people to step forward. It takes a little courage, you know. Uh, that's why I put that JFK quote uh, as the blurb to this podcast. I thought it was a great quote. He was talking about when John Glenn... Uh, uh, circled the earth, you know, and he said, uh, there are milestones in human progress that mark recorded history. It requires physical and moral stamina to equal the stresses of these times. Uh, it's a fantastic quote. Uh, um, you can go on to YouTube and listen to his whole talk. It's short. Uh, uh, and then it goes into a whole video about John Glenn that you don't need to watch if you don't want to. But that little blurb, that little speech that JFK gave, I thought was beautiful. Sayuga is rising. The cobwebs are clearing. You can already see it happening. Uh, but we have a ways to go. And see the transition from Kali Yuga now to this brief period of Sayuga. The nature of that transition is critical. It can come in gradually, smooth as silk. Or it can come in, uh, uh, well, in the extreme case, uh, as an Armageddon. I think we're past that. But clearly, it's rougher than it, it could have been. You know, we sh I wish we built this thing 20 years later. And I've been trying. But, you know, we still need that, really, that one billionaire to just write the check and we'll build it. You know, and I don't want any of the money. I just want to build the thing. You know, I'm doing all this for free, you know? All right. Uh, uh, I guess that's about it. Unless there's anything else, Scotty, did we leave anything out? No, I think you got it all. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks for listening. I hope this is making sense it. to you. And uh, what's that, Scotty? Okay. No, I think you all got right. it all. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And think about this. Give it some thought. You know, let's clean that fishbowl and everybody will be fine. All right. Take care. Thanks for listening.